Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. This video will provide an overview of the process of cell respiration. The picture on this slide shows the many stages, reactants, and products of photosynthesis, which will be elaborated on in the rest of this video. Cell respiration, just like photosynthesis, is an example of a biochemical pathway. While photosynthesis is a process that only occurred in autotrophs, cell respiration is a pathway that occurs in all organisms, autotrophs and heterotrophs. To oversimplify things, cell respiration is a process by which sugars are broken down and the energy in those sugars is used to form ATP, as the picture on the bottom of this slide shows. While all organisms do some form of cell respiration, there are a number of different ways in which it can occur. Two important factors to determine the type of cell respiration that will be done are the type of organism that is being discussed and whether or not oxygen is available. When oxygen is available, as highlighted in red in the picture here, some organisms can perform a type of respiration called aerobic respiration. When oxygen is not available, anaerobic respiration takes place. The rest of this video will describe these two different forms of cell respiration. Aerobic respiration is a process that, as the last slide indicated, requires oxygen. Not all organisms, however, can perform this type of cell respiration, even in the presence of oxygen. Since part of this process takes place in the mitochondria cells, only organisms that have mitochondria, or eukaryotes, can perform this process. There are three important stages of aerobic respiration, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. The individual stages of aerobic respiration, their specific locations, reactants, and products, are discussed in a separate video entitled Aerobic Cellular Respiration. While the specific details of the different stages of aerobic respiration are beyond the scope of this video, the overall products and reactants are not. This slide shows the overall equation for aerobic respiration. The equations on the top and bottom show the exact same thing, but the bottom one just happens to be balanced. The most important thing, in my opinion, is that you're familiar what goes into the reaction and what comes out of the reaction, the products and the reactants. There are two different reactants in the process of aerobic respiration. These might be a bit difficult to remember, so here are a few tips. Aerobic means with oxygen, so it should come as no surprise that oxygen gas, or O2, is a reactant of this equation. Glucose, or C6H12O6, is the only other reactant. One key concept with cell respiration is that the bonds in a sugar molecule are broken down to produce energy, so that might not be too difficult to remember either. There are three different products of cell respiration, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. There are a few things that might help you remember what these products are. Respiration means, in essence, to breathe. The reason that humans expel carbon dioxide when they respire or breathe is that cells give it off as a waste product. The point of cell respiration is to produce energy, so ATP, a high energy molecule, is another sensible product of this process. As the balanced equation on the previous slide suggested, aerobic respiration produces about 38 ATP. When you take into consideration all of the energy stored in the bonds of a glucose molecule, about two-thirds of the potential energy in that molecule is harvested. Car engines are about 25 to 30 percent efficient, so our cells look pretty good in comparison. As the image to the right shows, only two ATP is produced through glycolysis, the first step of cell respiration. The majority of the energy is obtained through the second and third steps of cell respiration, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. This entire unit is focused upon two biochemical pathways that we have now discussed, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. These videos have focused upon many things, one of which was the overall equation for each of these two processes. When you look at these two equations right next to each other, do you notice anything interesting? Carbon dioxide is a reactant for photosynthesis and a product of cellular respiration. The same is true for water. Glucose, which is a product of photosynthesis, is a reactant of cell respiration. And the same is true for oxygen gas. If you look at the big picture, the products of each of these chemical reactions are the reactants of the other. If you look at the two processes as a whole, the big picture is that energy in the form of sunlight is used to produce ATP for autotrophic cells. For heterotrophs, you merely need to cut out the top half of this graphic, where photosynthesis takes place. 
heterotrophs just eat other organisms to obtain their energy instead of doing photosynthesis. The purpose of cellular respiration is to produce lots of energy to fuel cell processes. When circumstances are optimal, aerobic respiration can be performed. Waste products are recycled and lots of energy is produced for the cell. Under less ideal conditions, anaerobic respiration or fermentation needs to be performed. There are two main types of anaerobic respiration or fermentation, and those are lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Both of these types of fermentation are named after their waste product. Lactic acid fermentation produces lactic acid, and alcoholic fermentation produces ethanol, a type of alcohol. As mentioned earlier in this video, all organisms can perform some form of fermentation. Bacteria can perform lactic acid fermentation, the process by which yogurt, sauerkraut, and cheeses are made. Organisms such as yeast can perform alcoholic fermentation. Bread, root beer, and every imaginable alcoholic beverage is produced by yeast alcoholic fermentation. In anaerobic respiration, the only energy that is produced is through the process of glycolysis that we talked about earlier. There is a grand total of two ATP produced during fermentation, as shown on the graphic on this slide, produced instead of the 38 ATP obtained through aerobic respiration. As a result, fermentation is only about 3.5% efficient. Since both types of fermentation produced a waste product and they are pitifully inefficient, why in the world would organisms even bother with anaerobic respiration? First, not all organisms possess mitochondria, which is a requirement for aerobic respiration. The only means by which bacteria can produce ATP is through fermentation. Second, anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. When humans are performing a specially strenuous activity, not enough oxygen can get to the different tissues of the body that it needs, like muscles. To pick up the slack, humans can do lactic acid fermentation. If you get really sore after exercising, a buildup of lactic acid in your muscles is probably responsible for it. The two ATP that are formed during anaerobic respiration comes from the first step, glycolysis. What the rest of the steps of fermentation do is recycle waste products so that this process can continue at some level. The highlighted section on this slide shows the regeneration of NAD. Without accomplishing this, converting NADH to NAD, glycolysis could not continue. That is the end of this video, providing an overview of the process of cellular respiration. If you are interested in watching any other videos pertaining to cell respiration or photosynthesis, or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.